Well, hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Miss Coffee here. And today we're back with a whip and chat. Whip stands for work in progress. And if you have this exact same whip as I do, it is time to pull out those DAC calendars for 2024 and work on our April edition as this is the last full week of March. I know March had somewhere to be, so they're dropping it off us off in April. So it is almost time for April to come. So of course, we're gonna be working on my DAC calendar, the April uh, image, which is gonna be this beautiful little uh, flower pot of tulips. So if you have this whip and you're finding, you're not finding the motivation to work on it, hopefully me working on it will give you the motivation. There's a lot of color blocking in these uh, calendars. So I really, really like working on them once a month. It gives me a little bit of something, makes me feel like I've done something, okay? Because if you didn't know, I've already explained in other videos that I'm going through a diamond painting burnout, meaning my little mojo for diamond painting my excitement my little flame has burnt out <laughs> but that's okay because I can still diamond paint every once in a while and it's not too bad so doing these actually helps a little bit because I feel like I'm not giving completely up on the craft while actually still doing the craft so that's what we're going to be doing today. So hopefully you got your project out and you're going to work with me. I'm going to tell you some stories of the coffee house shenanigans because you Lord knows there's always something. So I hope you guys are having a wonderful, wonderful day. So tools, we're, we're going with our Mooney made uh, little mini tray here. And then we have our Diamond Pen Pal Galaxy looking pen. And then our Diamond Pen Pal name. Uh, this is the one that they made for me when I hit 65 million views here on YouTube. Thank you again for that. So, and we also have our drills. Now, the reason why these are not out and ready to go is because I like to do little YouTube reels for these so that you guys can see these done in hyper speed. So yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. Again, I hope you're all having a wonderful, wonderful day. Now, this particular kit only has nine colors. And we're going to start off by cutting these apart. So if you're new to diamond painting, this might be a helpful video to you as I'm going to be doing this all at once. Now, one of the things I tell you in my other videos not to do is something that I'm going to do in this video because this kit only has so many colors and I am going to be finishing it on this video. So I don't have to worry about like, you know, anything else. I can just work out of the bag and then put them back in the bags. And you can see each bag doesn't have a whole lot of drills in it. So there's no point of kitting this all the way up just to kit it all the way down in 10 minutes. So, we're going to be working out of these bags and then putting the drills back in the bags. So, I don't have to worry about kitting them up. So, we have 20, we have 10, we have 18. I don't know why these say that there's so many. There are not this many. But I think it's just the color they gave it. This is 6. This is 9. This is 19. And I'm just putting them in order over here above the canvas so that I... Um, know exactly where everything's at. Everything's in like numerical order and then it just makes it nice and tidy for me. So it's starting off with number six. So I'm gonna show you up here. That's my phone case, don't worry about that. <laughs> so starting off with number six, 11, 10, 9, 13, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now that is the numbers that correspond on the actual diamond painting itself. So uh, there is a sheet of plastic on here to keep that safe from debris and stuff. Um, I am going to flip it like this, maybe, M maybe. Um, what is, there's, oh, oh, there's a thumbtack in there. I was like, wait, why is that so hard to lay down? It's because there was a thumbtack that we were missing in there. So anyways, so how are you guys doing? I hope you're doing well. We're going to start at the bottom here because I want to work on this flower pot part pot part try saying that five times fast so i'm gonna get my little cover reminder of this little b i'm just gonna put it there it's gonna keep the release paper back so it's out of my way and then we're gonna open up our first baggie of drills which is gonna be number six because that's what it starts off with so this weekend was pretty chill this weekend we didn't have a whole lot going on we typically don't do much of anything we are a very boring family in that aspect as we don't do stuff on the weekends like most families um, not because we don't like, there's, there's not anything to do is that the kids typically just want to chill. If the kids want to go out of the house or do something, they usually will let us know. And if we're able to do it, we'll go do it. Um, but typically we just kind of sit in the house. Now, the last time I did one of these for the March edition of this, we did a time lapse. And if you pay close attention, I single place that entire thing. I sure did. I single place that entire thing. Well, guess what I'm not doing this time. <laughs> 
the way that kit took forever to complete. So I am not single placing this one. I will be multi-placing, seeing as how everything seems to be in nice, even rows. Let me make sure y'all guys can see what I'm doing. We're going to bring you down just a little bit into the business. So yeah, so this weekend, we didn't do much of anything. Plus last week, I got something that I've been wanting for a long time. And Mr. Coffee got a bonus. Um, and with his bonus, what he typically does as he lets the members of the family all pick out one gift. We all get one gift that, uh, and it's kind of a, sorry that I haven't been around a whole lot, but you know, here, let me buy your love and affection with this bonus check I got from work. <laughs> um, so with his bonus check, I was able to get something called a Steam Deck. A Steam Deck, if you play games on Steam, then you know what a Steam Deck is. It's a handheld device, kind of like a Nintendo Switch, but for the Steam, um, for the Steam app. So I can play like all of my Steam games on this thing. That is what I've done all weekend. I was setting it up. I haven't had a chance to actually like play with it since I got it. Mostly because things have been incredibly busy here for the last couple of weeks. Um, and there's been like lots of stuff that's been happening this, even just this weekend, which again, we'll go over here in a few minutes, but it's been an incredibly busy week. Like last week, um, whenever you, I hate when you update things and it seems to break more things than it fixes. So last week there was an update to my computer, like my, my laptop. So I have a MacBook pro that I use to stream off of. Um, and that's for when I'm over on Twitch. I have a MacBook Pro that I usually stream off of, and so um, whenever there's an update with that, there's an update with this software called OBS, which the, this is the software I use to uh, stream over on Twitch, right? And so there was an update for both of them, and there usually is at the same time, they'll both have an update. Now, I learned my lesson last time that if I update one, I want to update both at the same time, because if I don't, it makes the OBS act wonky and vice versa. If I, if I update OBS and not my computer, it makes my computer act wonky. So I have learned to make sure that I'm updating at the same time. And I did. And then I sat there, and if you're on Patreon, you would have heard me say, I'm not going to test it because I don't feel like it. Now, I need to stop being in that I don't feel like it mindset because the way I didn't get but two hours of sleep between Wednesday and Thursday because I spent that entire time troubleshooting what was going on with my OBS. So I also use something called a PNG tuber. It's like a VTuber, but it doesn't move as much. So if you've ever been over on Twitch and seen my little fox character or my human character sitting at the tablet or the little fox, like the actual little fox, um, those are called PNG tubers, okay? So they move their head or hands and they, you know, while I talk to you. Well, apparently Wednesday when I went to go stream, my PNG tuber was causing a lot of issues with my stream. And I didn't know what it was at first because uh, I was just freaking out because just as much as everybody else freaks out because why can't I see anything, I'm freaking out because why can't they see anything? Kind of pointless to be streaming to yourself. So I was like, okay, I got to troubleshoot this now. So after doing some much needed troubleshooting, I finally figured it out and I was like, okay, it's the PNG tuber. The problem is I don't do what is called flesh tubing. Flesh tubing is where you have a webcam on and you're just showing your face. I don't do that. The last time I did that, some weird guy came into my, my comments and was like acting very odd. So I don't do like the whole face cam thing, which is fine. I'm okay with it. People around me are okay with it. We're good. We're good. So I was like, okay, well, I have to fix this. Because what am I supposed to do when I'm streaming? Like, last resort would be to turn my webcam back on. Plus, the last time I had a face cam where I showed my actual face, um, the camera that I bought for streaming, um, it overheats. Yeah, yeah. It said it was perfect for streaming, but then it overheats as I'm trying to stream, and the battery only lasts an hour and a half. Now, take it. My Most of my streams are no less than four hours. And then every hour and a half, I would have to change the battery on the freaking camera because it would die. So I was like, yeah, no, PNG tubing is great for me. Now, I could get a webcam, and I have one, and I've used it a few times, but I don't like the quality of the quality of it. I don't like that I can't zoom in and out like I can on a camera. I don't want to buy a DSLR because that seems ridiculous to buy 
something that expensive for it just to show your face on camera when there's other options that are cheaper than that. So I just decided that for me, the best thing is PNG tubing. Plus, even on YouTube here, I don't show my face too often. And it's not for any other reason besides you, you, you're not really even supposed to be looking at me. Like right now, you shouldn't be looking at the screen. You should be working on your diamond painting. <laughs> but I was freaking out because I didn't know what to do and how to fix it, right? So I learned, or we, when we streamed uh, the rest of the Wednesday stream without my PNG tuber, I immediately went to work trying to figure out what exactly was wrong with her. I spent the entire day and evening up troubleshooting, contacting like website developers that developed the app for the PNG tuber and OBS team, and just trying to troubleshoot what exactly is going wrong. And so finally, I guess a few of my friends had finally woken up and they saw me struggling um, because I kept going live and they were like, do you need some help? And I'm like, please, please help me because I'm, I'm struggling. So luckily for me, I do have a couple of tech savvy friends and my friend Veronder, who you would have saw a reel about uh, go up on the channel on Sunday. Um, he drew a Bessie Coleman image for us for the Black History Month prompt that I had for my artist friends. So if you do see that video from him and the other artists that participated, please feel free to throw some love their way. Um, it makes them feel good when they see that you guys are watching and commenting and liking on uh, stuff that they've done. And Veronda was very proud of his image because it was the first time, I believe that was the first time he used gouache. Gouache? Gouache is a type of paint. And it can be a little bit hard to manipulate whenever you are first using it. So that was his first time using it and his image turned out beautiful. So again, if you happen to see any of the Black History Month uh, videos going up on the uh, YouTube reels, if you wouldn't mind like and commenting and, you know, doing pressing all the buttons, I would appreciate it. Um, so yeah, so by Friday, I had all my technical difficulty stuff figured out and Rhonda had helped me get through all of that. And I was like, I am so thankful. I will do anything. Don't don't hesitate to ask. I don't care what Oh, sorry, you can't see me. I'm like, I don't care what it is. You want me to do something? Tell me what it is and I'll do it. And I had mentioned something um, on stream about, you know, Fortnite. Now, I do not play Fortnite. I do play a lot of little cozy games, okay? Palea, Fay Farm, Sims 4, stuff like that. Fortnite is not my vibe. It just, it's just not. I don't know what it is about the game. I just, I'm not a fan. And so he is a Fortnite player, him and a few of my other friends. And he was like, you know, I mentioned about playing Fortnite. And he goes, well, you said you'd do anything. And I was like, oh, Lord, no. That is not what I meant. So I had gotten roped into playing Fork Knife. Now, I, again, am not a Fork Knife player. I do know how to play games like that, as I used to play, like, a lot of Call of Duty and stuff in Gears of War. So when he asked me to play, I was like, please, God, anything. can you ask me for anything but that? Like, <laughs> I'll do Strange for Change just to not have to do Like, you ever offer somebody strange for change in exchange for not having to do something you really don't want to do? Look, listen... <laughs> The way I was about to offer strange for change, I was like, look, listen, I'll I'll do anything else. I was having a meatloaf moment. I'll do anything for for love, but I won't do that. I, I no, I, I, I won't do that. And I was like, you know what? I said anything. That's what he chose, so that's what I'm gonna do. So I did play two rounds of Fork Knife with him and my friend Christy and my friend Shadow. And um we won even though, you know, while we're playing the game, I had gotten taken down one time. Like, the, I was so proud of myself. I had only gotten hit once to the point where I was on the ground, and I was crawling over them for them to revive me. And when I crawled over, uh, Christy just kind of ran me over with her dirt bike and killed me. So um, we had a great time. We had a great time. Even though I was murdered, um, we had a wonderful time. And yeah, so I paid back my debt. So now my stream works properly and I don't owe a debt to anyone. <laughs> so that feels good. But then late Friday night, we're sitting here and Mr. Coffee said he wasn't feeling too hot. And I was like, what's wrong? He goes, I don't know, my chest hurts. And I'm like, what do you mean your chest hurts? And he goes, I, I think I need to go out to the ER. And I'm like, okay. So I go upstairs, I let Orion know, hey, we're leaving. 
because he was like half sleep. I just wanted him to know that, you know, he's keeping an eye on his sister who was also asleep. I was like, we're, we have to go out of the house for a few minutes. And I didn't want to freak him out. So I didn't tell him, you know, while we were leaving. I don't even think he remembers me waking him up, to be honest. And I was like, we got to, I got to go do something. And he's like, okay. He rolls over. And I was like, okay, it's like late, late in the mornings. And my kids don't typically get up. Once they go to bed, they're, they're asleep. Okay. They're not waking back up. So we take Mr. Coffee out and find out that Mr. Coffee's age is starting to catch up with him as he's experiencing some health issues with his blood pressure and having a few clogged arteries and stuff like that. Don't worry. He is fine. He is fine. Um, but we are going to have to do some diet changes. And, of course, immediately when somebody says diet, it makes my ass itchy. I'm like, um, hello? <laughs> diet? I'm Southern. We don't diet. And they're like, well, you both could stand to lose a little bit of weight. Excuse me? Wait, we didn't come in here for me? What you come picking on me for? Look, listen, listen. Growing up, I was that that twig, that toothpick, you, if you will, that sheet of paper that could slip through cracks in the floor, okay? I had no body, adi, adi, okay? Now, as an almost 40-year-old woman, I have curves, and I love the body that I'm in. I love the size that I am. I do wish I can get rid of, like, gut thing underneath my neck, but that's, like, something I've had my entire life, unfortunately. <laughs> I've always had a double chin. Even when I didn't have body, I had a fat face. I don't know why that is. But I like the skin that I'm in. I'm happy with the weight that I am. Could I be smaller? Of course I could. Do I want to be? No. <laughs> no, I don't. I spent my whole life growing up being asked if I was sick or anemic, or not anemic, but anorexic because I was so small. Like, and when I say small, I was like 75 pounds, which is where Maggie gets it from. Um, I was 75 pounds at age 18, okay? I was small. And you got to remember, I've been 6'1 since like the eighth grade. So I was sickly small, like Maggie, until I was like 21 when I had Minna. And then I'd start gaining a little bit more weight. It's like my metabolism was like, oh, you had a kid. Okay, let us slow down a little bit. So when they said that he has to change his diet, now Mr. Coffee isn't overweight, okay? He's not overweight. He has a little bit of a belly, but that comes from him being inactive when he's at home. I try to get him to get up and get active by like walking the dogs and such, but that is not his vibe. He is not about walking dogs or doing anything of the sort when he's home, and he shouldn't be. He just worked 12 hour days, five days a week. When he gets home on the weekends, those two little days that he does have, he's not on call. He just wants to sit and relax, and I can completely understand that. But he still needs to get up and exercise. Now, he will see me out back here, and I'll be running on my treadmill, or I'll be walking up and down the stairs up front, and he'll just kind of look at me and keep playing his game. And I don't have a problem with that because, you know, like I said, he just worked all week. The least he can do is relax on his days off. So to now find out that he does need to get up and get a little bit more active because he's experiencing some stuff and it's coming from long-term smoking. He's not a drinker. He, he doesn't drink, but long-term smoking and stuff like that will cause like this and like the, the diet you keep. And he doesn't necessarily have what you would call a healthy diet. So like, I'm going to move this because the next number is number 11 which is up here at the top for this pink uh, flower. So we're gonna do this, and then we're gonna work on number 11 here, because I'm just going in, in the order that the drills are sitting there. So we have to do some diet changes, and Mr. Coffee looks at me, and he's like, you know, I don't want to eat healthy. I don't want to do, I'm like, nobody wants to do this, but if you wanna be around for your children to grow up and watch them grow up and watch to see if we get grandbabies or anything of the sort, um, you're going to want to start watching what you eat. Now, I know a big part of his problem is also the fact that he drinks monster energy drinks like most people drink soda. And the doctors already told him once that he needs to cut out the monster energy drinks. The problem is he gets to be a little bit of an irritable butthole whenever you try to take them away from him. He's like a small child. And so I've fussed at him about it and he will fuss back at me about, you know, how he's grown and he can have it. I'm like, sir, we would like for you to stay around long enough to see your youngest daughter graduate high school. 
I don't want you to have a heart attack because you decided that Monster Energy drink was more important than your family. If you actually went to bed at a good time, you wouldn't need the Monster Energy drink, to be completely honest with you. You could probably have a cup of coffee and be just fine. The problem is, speaking of coffee, I didn't make no coffee today. What? What? What is happening? Um, the problem is, is that Mr. Coffee is set in his ways. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. That is Mr. Coffee to, 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 like through and through. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. Mr. Coffee doesn't want to change his lifestyle. He wants to get healthier by not changing his lifestyle. And unfortunately for him, as he already knows, that is not something that you can do. You have to change the way you eat, drink, and all the other things. And he drinks tea a lot. Like, he drinks, uh, like, iced tea a lot. So it's not like... It's not like um, he's drinking, like, alcohol or just, like, nothing but energy drinks. Like me, I drink nothing but coffee. I've added water to, like, my drinking now since I've gotten my my Hello Kitty cup. Um, it's like a Stanley dupe, but it's Hello Kitty. And so I've been drinking water with that, and I will sometimes, I will have a soda with dinner, and that's it. Like, those those are the main drinks that I have. And even when we go out to eat, I typically try to get a, dark, a light soda, because dark soda really, really bothers my stomach. So, he is a grumpy boy right now. He's a grumpy boy, and that's okay, because he has a doctor's appointment first thing in the morning tomorrow, like 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, and he is not happy about it. And I'm like, well, if you took better care of yourself, you wouldn't have an appointment at 7 a.m. Don't know what to tell you, buddy. So, he's kind of going through it right now, but don't worry. He will be fine. We will get him back on track, and I will start cooking in ways that are a little bit healthier for us. Um, cause again, I would like to be around for my children to grow up and see them do things, you know, as they get older. And I can't do that if I'm not eating properly and taking care of myself. So, and I've been, every, everything has been code alert me since my stroke. And so now it's time for us to do pretty much the same thing with Mr. Coffee. Like keep an eye on what he's eating and how much salt he's intaking and all this. And it's like, because I try not to use a lot of salt because I don't want to end up with high blood pressure, which you would think that I would end up with high blood pressure with as hot-headed as I can be. Um, but no, no, he's the one with high blood pressure. My blood pressure is fine. <laughs> it was a little shaky there when I had the Rona, but other than that, my blood pressure has been absolutely fine. So we dealt with that this past weekend. We got home, of course, before the kids even woke up. We went to bed at like 6 or 7, and I was still back up at like 11. <laughs> So it was, it was a little bit of a bumpy weekend, but we got through it. And then, of course, it was the Maggie, it's the end of the month. It's time for you to cash in and start cleaning your room. Now, once a month, because it's Maggie's space, we have stopped. We've learned to pick our battles. We're not going to stop making her clean her room. We're just not going to have her clean it as often because it's not worth the headache. And you got to pick your battles, right? She's the child. She should just listen to me when I say clean your room. But she's also not a dog. She's a whole human. And I'm breaking the generational curse of you do what I say because I'm the adult and you have no say in the matter. Now, this is her space, right? This is her space that she has to live in. Nobody goes in her room but her. Randomly, Orion will go in there to mess with her. But for the most part, nobody goes in her room but her. So we allow her to kind of sit in her squalor, <laughs> if you will. And her squalor usually consists of cut up pieces of paper tissues that she has used for some kind of craft she learned how to make tissue flowers so a whole roll of double charmin was used to make white tissue flowers with colorful tips they were cute but now there's tissue and glue all over her room um and then little ch chopped up pieces of paper from her cutting stuff out for her paper dragons maggie's a very crafty kid so I don't want to stunt that creativity she has for being crafty because when she gets older you know Maybe she'll teach other people like mommy does how to do crafty things. See, now that I said I don't have any coffee, now I really want coffee. Anyways, um, I'll, I'll pause here in a few minutes, go get some. But, so what we've arranged is once a month, she has to spend the weekend in her room cleaning it. She can't leave her room unless she's coming out to get food or drinks. But other than that, she is to clean her room. So this weekend is the last, this, this past weekend is the second to last weekend of the month. So I was like, hey, it is about that time. 
Um, so we're going to close you up in your room, take your tablet and turn off your TV, and we're going to have you clean your room. Now, Maggie cleaning her room is a whole Olympic event because first she has to sit there and pout about it because she doesn't want to do it. Who wants to clean up? Nobody wants to clean up. I like cleaning, especially if it's a big mess, but little messes irritate the piss out of me and I hate cleaning them. So I feel her. I feel her. So like... She has to throw a fit first before she cleans the room. This is the stages of your child cleaning their room. And tell me if you can agree with this because my child does this and I'm pretty sure everybody else's kid does this too. So first they have to grieve. They have to throw a fit in a tantrum about having to do it. Then they have to angrily go, well, fine, if they want it clean, I'm going to do it as messily as possible. And then they have to throw stuff around for a while. Then after throwing stuff around for a while, then they go, hey, I haven't seen this toy in a hot minute. Let me play with this. Then they have to play with the toys for like two or three hours, okay? These are toys that they never once played with before. The only reason why they're out of their correct destination is because they used, they, they threw, they threw, oh, sorry, y'all can't see anything that I'm doing. My bad, my bad. So I got that, I got that flower done. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm just a rambling and not paying attention, Lord. Um... So yeah, if you got to this point, I know, I know you couldn't see. I promise to make sure I look up whenever I start diamond painting again so that you guys can see what I'm doing. So they have to grieve and then they go into this, the playing part of it. So now it's, I'm going to play because I don't want to, uh, and we're going for number nine now. So we're going to take the B away, lift this back up. And we're going over here. Where's my magnet? I can fill it, but it's not catch. Oh, it's stuck on the glue over here. <laughs> there we go. So now we're working on number nine, which is the flower pot itself. And I promise to make sure that you guys can see what I'm doing this time. My apologies. I just get to rambling and I don't pay attention. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I know. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, so then after she's done playing, she's like, whew, now I got to take a nap because I'm tired from all that playing. So then she has to lay on the floor and take a nap. The nap lasts usually about mm, an hour. It's probably the best sleep they get in their life. Like you would have thought that you took them out of the house all day to get fresh air because if your child is like mine's fresh air knocks them out when they get home. So you would have thought that they were out in the fresh air all day with as quickly as they fall asleep. They don't sleep that soundly when it's bedtime. Okay. Only when they have to clean their room or being told to do something that they don't want to do. Right. So then once they wake up, they're back to the angry stage. It's, I don't want to do this. I'm tired. <laughs> and then you have to go up and fuss at them. And then at that point is when they start actually paying attention and like, okay, I should really probably try to get this clean because I don't want to be in here anymore. And then you might possibly get a, a, a result that you're looking for. Sometimes you have to repeat those steps over and over. For Maggie, sometimes we have to repeat those steps three or four times. Um, by the time she's done, she's not tired anymore at least. <laughs> she can go enjoy the last 20 minutes of her day <laughs> because it's always like they finish right before bedtime. And then we have to go through the grieving process again because they stayed in their room all day finicking with their room that by the time that they're done, it's time for them to go to bed. And they're like, but I want to stay up. I missed my entire day. And it's like, this is the consequences, consequences, consequences of your actions. You chose to play and stay in your room all day. And now it's bedtime. You don't get to stay up later because you decided to do some poor management skills with your time. So... She did clean her room up. She got it cleaned and then she didn't even want to come out of the room after she got it cleaned. She's like, I just like how clean it is now. And I'm like, yeah, if you just kept it this way, that would be great. Now, I will go in sometimes and clean her room for her. This is not a good idea. Why? Because then she expects you to do it all the time. So you want to make sure that they're cleaning their own room. Because if you do it for them, you're not teaching them anything besides somebody else is going to be there to clean up their mess, right? And that's not a lesson we want to teach our kids. We don't want to teach our kids to let somebody else clean up your mess. You clean up your own mess. You made the mess, you clean it up. And so what I always do as well is if Orion goes in there and messes with her like he likes to do, 
if he messes with her to the point where they're like at each other's throats or they're fighting upstairs, I will make him help her clean her room. Because if you got time to sit there and play with her while she's trying to clean her room, you got time to sit there and help her out. And I won't make him help her clean the entire room. I'll leave him up there for maybe 20, 30 minutes because they're going to play. That's the only time that they get along is when they're doing that. They're going to play. And then by the time it's time for him to be done, nothing has been done. If nothing else, a bigger mess has been formed. And then he'll just try to dip out. And I'm like, uh-uh, you're going to clean up part of this. So then I'll make sure he cleans up some part of it. And then I'll let him leave. Um, but yeah, so she caught the room cleaned up. And then she stayed in there all all day on Saturday. And she just sat playing with her stuff and uh, making little paper dragons that she likes to make. Some video she found on YouTube about how to make little paper dragons. They look like hand puppets. And so that was pretty much her weekend was sitting in her room. Now, Friday afternoon, she had gotten in trouble. So technically, she was already grounded to her room anyways. Um, she had gotten in trouble because as I'm getting ready to stream, and I swear she only pulls this stuff when we let her outside right before I'm about to stream. So she went outside, and every time she goes outside, I go, Maggie, recite the rules of going outside to me. Now, the reason I make her do this is, one, it's a reminder to her what she can and can't do when she goes outside. I don't mind that she's feral. I'm also not going to follow her around outside the entire time she's out there, okay? Because she will stay out there till she's blue in the face, okay? So... She is like, you know, don't talk to strangers. Uh, don't go out of sight of the house. If I can't see the house, I've gone too far, blah, blah, blah. And so I was like, all right, you can go outside. So she goes outside and I knew who she was playing with because she had already told me. And luckily this child had already like messaged my cell phone to, to uh, she had messaged my cell phone to try to find Maggie the one day. And so I had the little girl's cell phone number. Maggie goes outside. She is like a fart in the wind. Immediately, as soon as her foot steps outside, she's gone. And then it was time for her to come back in like 20 or 30 minutes later. And Mr. Coffee and I are just kind of sitting there like, um, hello? <laughs> hello? Ma'am? Where, where did she go? And I'm like, I don't know. Mr. Coffee comes back right as I'm getting ready to start recording or start streaming on Friday. And he goes, I can't find Maggie. Well, that sounds like a you problem, sir. I have to go to work. Like, What? So I was like, oh my God. So I I go outside. I start yelling for her. I don't see her. I don't see her. And I'm like, okay. So I, I remembered I had the little girl's phone number. So I go over and I call the little girl and I'm like, hey, where's my kid? And she's like, oh, she's right here. Send her home. So Maggie comes in the house and Mr. Coffee looks at her and he goes, what is the rules? And she goes, daddy, I was at the park. And he goes, no, you're not. You came from the opposite direction of the park. And she did. She came from the opposite direction. It's that type 4 liabilities, y'all. I told y'all there's no cure for this. There's, there's no cure. So I'm like, ma'am, you recited the rules before you left. How did you recite the rules and still forget? That's not you forgetting. That's now a choice. You chose to go out of sight of the house to go where you wanted to go. And that's not how this goes. So now you're grounded for the rest of the weekend, which... She, even if she wasn't grounded, she wouldn't have been able to go outside because happy spring, everyone. It is officially spring, and we have five to six inches of snow on the ground. Yes, it snowed all weekend. Friday was fine, then Saturday morning hit, and it was like it did not stop until yesterday evening about 11 o'clock. And so even if she wanted to go outside, she wouldn't have been able to because there's just so much snow on the ground. Um, I took a picture and put it up on Instagram. So, yeah, so she, she, even if she wanted to uh, go outside, she wouldn't have been able to. I mean, she could have, I guess, but she's not one to go outside when it's snowing. She doesn't mind what, after it snows. Like today, if she wanted to go outside, she'd probably ask to go outside. But for the most part, if it's snowing, yeah, no, she's not going out there. I don't know why that is. So she spent her weekend in the room and then comes Orion Y'all, what gives teens the audacity, okay? I'm getting a little bit better with the whole fact that Orion's getting older. And, you know, he's not a baby anymore. And he's, you know, a whole little human now. And so um, he comes up to me and he's like, hey, mom. I'm like, yeah, dude. He goes, when are we signing me up for track? Now, he's been talking about doing track and field um for a little bit now and I had already gotten the paperwork and stuff ready and signed for him to do it I just needed to turn it in and I was like 
okay, why are you asking me about that? Now, I had already, like, tried talking to, like, the school and stuff about it and, like, figuring out what all I needed to get done, like, getting him a, a physical and stuff. And I was like, the reason I held it back was this because right before, I want to say it was right before he broke the TV is when I got it, like, the information and everything. And so then he broke the TV. Then he, you know, got in trouble at school and all this. And he's like, well, because my friend signed up, so I want to sign up. And I was like, you do realize that just because your friend signed up doesn't mean anything. Like, what does that have to do with the price of cheese, sir? And he's like, well, because I wanted to sign up too. And I'm like, you know what I want? I want you to be able to take the dogs out at the right time. So Ryan has this bad habit. His one chore right now is to walk the dogs. He has to walk the dogs um, in the evenings when he gets home, right? He will do everything he can to avoid walking the dogs to make his dad walk the dogs. He will wait until it's really late. He won't walk them on time. And the dogs will tell you uh, the time it's time for them to go outside. Like, if you tell them they can go out, you know, a few times other than their scheduled times, they'll still go. But if you're not on the point dot of what time they normally go out, they will let you know, hey, I want to go outside. Killian will go as far as grabbing his leash and throwing it at you. Hey, I want to go outside. Well, Orion will go up to his room and go to the bathroom and then sit up there forever. He is he is truly a guy. Um, and I'm thinking, what are you doing up there? He doesn't have his phone or anything in there with the, in the bathroom with him. He's just in there chilling. And I'm like, that's not a club. That's not somewhere you hang out. Like, no, who's hanging out in the bathroom? Like, sir, I'm going to need you to come up out of the bathroom and get your stuff done. Like, what are you doing? There's been plenty of nights where he hasn't even gotten a shower and it's time for him to go to bed. And I'm like, uh, you're just going to go to school stank tomorrow because uh, you're not about to go to bed late because you decided to have poor time management. That's the other thing is, you know, trying to teach them time management and what it means to be punctual versus always late. Um, so I'm like, you can't walk the dogs on time. You haven't walked the dogs on time in two weeks. You've broken a TV. You've gotten in trouble and got ISS in school, and I'm supposed to sign you up for an extracurricular activity. I'm like, we also have parent-teacher conferences coming up this week. So this week, Wednesday, I will be unavailable as not only do the kids have dentist appointments this Wednesday, but we also have parent-teacher conferences. So Wednesday's going to be incredibly busy for me. And so I'm like, okay, all right. Do you have all your assignments done? Because last time we went to a parent-teacher conference, he was supposed to have a presentation ready to present to his dad because his dad is the one that takes and does his parent-teacher conferences while I do Maggie's because Maggie was uh, doing some special ed classes and all the sorts. Um, I would go to hers because I would know more about that and Mr. Coffee would go to Orion's because he knows more about like all that science technology stuff. And so... Last time we had parent-teacher conferences, Orion had a bunch of un uh, incomplete assignments. Like, he would do them and just not turn them in. And I'm like, why? And he goes, I don't know. I love how I don't know is always his answer, and he always thinks it's going to get him out of doing whatever it is that he's supposed to be doing. And I'm like, sir, why didn't you do your assignments? I don't know. I need something other than an I don't know, or I'm, I'm going to take and go upstairs and chuck your computer out the window. And then look at you and go, I don't know why I did it. And he's like, oh, uh, I, I, I don't know why I didn't complete it. I just was lazy, I guess. There it is. I'm like, so you were being lazy when you, instead of playing video games, you should have been completing assignments. All right, bet. So he got grounded off his computer and stuff for a while because of that. And so this time I'm like, we have parent-teacher conferences coming up. Third quarter is over. They're in the last quarter of school. And I'm like, are all of your assignments complete? I don't know. What do you mean you What do you mean you don't know? Teenagers are the most non-knowing people I've ever met in my entire life, okay? They don't know nothing about nothing, okay? So I'm like, what do you what do you mean you don't know? I I don't know. I'm like, so you don't know if you completed assignments? No. Okay. And he just says it straight-faced. Uh, I don't I don't know. Sorry, I'm trying to get this magnet off that glue. There we go. And I'm just like, "Sir, you can't just not know, like, about your assignments and stuff. And he's like, 
well, I think they're complete. Well, I think they're, I'm like, how about we go double check? Is there a presentation you have to do this time for your dad for when he comes up? And he goes, I don't think so. He goes, I'm going to go check. He had two incomplete assignments that he realized that he had completed and just not turned in. He turned them in. He goes, all my assignments complete now. Can I sign up now? And I'm like, why do you want to sign up so bad? Because he's like, my friend's on track. I don't like, I don't care. I'm like, you know, I'm not signing you up for track for you to be playing with your friends. This is something that's going to cost us a lot of money when it comes to like clothing and cleats and everything else. And I'm like, I'm not doing this if you're not going to take it seriously, right? And he has been getting out of the house more and being a little bit more active. I can tell he's making an effort to be more active and I really want to sign him up for things. But I also do not want to reward his bad behavior because he very much has that mindset that if something breaks, just go get another one. Now, if you grew up from humble beginnings like me, you know it's not as simple as, oh, you broke a TV? Just go get another one. Excuse me? All right, sorry about that. I figured while they were pulling this car that got stuck in the snow out of the snow that I <laughs> would go take a break and go make my coffee. So we're good now. We're good. So yeah, so Orion wants to sign up for field and track, and I don't have a problem with this. I just want him to prove to me that he can behave and do as he's supposed to before I sign him up because again I don't want to sign him up and have him think that he can do any and everything and there's not consequences to his actions I don't have a problem signing him up I just have a problem with him misbehaving and then expecting to be able to do fun things after he misbehaves and I'm like N no no that's not how this works so yeah so he's doing good uh, since we had our talk, and I, I kind of had him, I, I sat down with him, and Orion's a pretty reasonable kid, he, he has a good head on his shoulders, and I sat him down and explained to him why it is that, you know, hey, this is why you can't do things, like, this is the consequences of your actions, every, you, you can choose to do whatever you want, you have the freedom to do so, but it's not free from consequence, so if you choose to go out and hurt someone, or you choose to go out and commit a crime, there is a consequence to that. You could go to jail. You could get hurt yourself. You don't know. So I want you to understand that there are consequences to your actions. And where getting in school suspension and breaking things at home, the most you're going to get is grounded. That's still a consequence. You don't like consequences because typically they're not good. So how about we behave for a little bit? We'll see how you are in about a week or two. And as long as you can do your chores as you're supposed to, which the other chore um, was uh, keeping his room clean, because for someone who doesn't leave his room, typically his room is pretty clean. But every once in a while, he'll he'll get into his like, I don't want to do anything phase and his room will be a little bit messy. And I'm like, hey, clean it up. But I don't have as much trouble with him as I do with Maggie again the 12 stages of grief with Maggie to clean her room up. Orion, you just tell him once to clean it up, he'll clean it up and then go back to what he's doing because he knows the quicker he cleans it up, the quicker he can go back to what he was doing and I'll leave him alone. So he, he's he got that aspect down to pack. If he could just tell his sister about this, that would be wonderful. That would be wonderful. Um, so we're also gearing up for our trip to Pennsylvania and getting things figured out with that because uh, right now everything's still kind of not up in the air, but everything's still like hurry up and wait so i hate the anxious feeling of this like being held over us and we're like okay we got to save money for this trip we can't we can't buy much of anything because we got to save money and we got to save money and i like i said i do have the diamond paintings that i'm going to be selling i did not get a chance to catalog them this weekend because your girl is learning how to relax right i think part of the reason why I burnt out on diamond painting besides the fact that I was going on I was working on them really quickly and the fact that I wasn't taking enough breaks um while doing it and I would just sit there for hours upon hours upon hours just diamond painting just to get it done because I'm like they want to see it done they don't have I don't have time for breaks and I would just spend all of my free time diamond painting I feel like part of that reason is because I don't know how to relax. I don't know how to take an actual day off. So when I'm not on YouTube, I'm on Twitch. When I'm not on Twitch, I'm on YouTube. There's never a day where I just sit and do nothing, right? I don't ever take breaks because I feel like if I take a break, something will go wrong. Like I will lose followers or I will uh, lose views or something of the sort. So taking a break is a no-no. 
And even when I did take the break off YouTube, there was no con there wasn't a whole lot of content going up, but I lost a very large chunk of my view my viewage, which happens when you take breaks because people find other things to watch to fill the void of you not uploading. And that's 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 common nature of social media, which is why I advocate for taking breaks and where it might not be the best for your numbers, it's going to be good for your mental health to take a break because this can get overwhelming. It can be very overwhelming when you're diamond painting or you're doing anything on social media and you feel like you can't have a day off. If you had a regular nine to five, you would get days off. Social media should be that same way, but it's not because you're depending on the people that watch you to keep um, your views and your everything up. And so if you're not giving them anything, they're obviously going to move on. Just like uh, if you're not being productive at work and your boss is like, hey, we need you to be more productive and you choose not to be, they're obviously going to replace you because they need you to be productive to get what they need to get done, done. It's a little bit different with social media. But I've learned that taking a break can be detrimental to your your channel, but it does wonders for your mental health. So it, it's kind of one of those fine balance things. And where I didn't want to take a break because I was afraid that if I did, I'm going to lose folks on the, sh the channel here. We're close. We are so close to 50,000. Okay. That has been my goal for like the last two years is to hit 50K. Why? Because that is a huge milestone. Okay. Um, and to me, that shows me that, you know, what I'm doing here is worthwhile that a 50,000 people chose to hit that subscribe button. And it, it means a lot to me. It, it just does. Like this channel was started from nothing. I had zero expectations. I still don't have a whole lot of expectations. It's just I do what I do and I have fun doing it. And that's it. That's it. Um, I even contacted DAC to let them know, you know, I've slowed down on YouTube a little bit. There's a lot going on on Twitch for me right now. Um, we're about to do a charity event for helping kids get gaming consoles and stuff. Um, I got chosen to be on this thing called the Carousel for Legendary Women for a year where they highlight female voices on the platform. And I was one of the ones that was selected um, to be a part of this shelf. And like my viewers are over there growing and I'm trying to build that social media up. But while I'm doing that, I'm trying not to forget my YouTube folks because I don't ever want to forget where I came from. So I try to post when I can and how much I can. But sometimes it's not always a whole lot. Sometimes I just don't feel like I'm up to a whip and chat. Like today at first, before I, I talked to a few of my friends, I didn't feel up to a whip and chat. And you guys probably would have gotten a time lapse. But sometimes it just takes me being able to talk things out with other people because I've been stressed out because of Mr. Coffee and everything. And again, don't worry. He is okay. Um, thank you in advance for your thoughts and prayers for Mr. Coffee. I'm sure he'll be just fine. Um, we just have to watch what he's eating and how much of it he's eating and all this other stuff. Um, we'll know more information at the doctor's appointment tomorrow. Uh, he has a doctor's appointment like literally like 7 a.m. tomorrow. And luckily for us, the doctor's, like, right down the street. It's, like, two minutes down the street. So he doesn't have to, like, get up at crazy hours or anything. But, uh, yeah. Even though this morning, I don't know what it was, but Maggie kept thinking that she didn't have school today because it was snowing. And Maggie forgets that the only reason why last time they didn't have school or I didn't have them go to school is because I was driving them. And I don't do snow well. So... When it came time for them to get taken to school because I was driving them, I was like, yeah, no, my kids are missing school today because I'm not driving in this crap. I'm not doing it. Well, now they're back on the bus. So guess who went to school today? They did have a two-hour delay because the roads are kind of crap because they haven't plowed anything yet. I don't know what it's up with the plowing thing and why they wait until, like, an hour before, like, school's about to start and all this to decide that they want to uh, plow the streets and stuff. But they hadn't plowed anything, and so they put the kids on a two-hour delay this morning. And so Maggie woke up, and she's like, do we actually have school? I'm like, yeah, you actually have school. I was just happy that I didn't have to be the one taking them. <laughs> I'm like, because I'm not about to try to get out here in all this snow. I'm watching cars. Like, we have had a car stuck behind our house since Saturday afternoon, okay? They just pulled that car out. I'm not about to be out here and getting stuck, okay? 
especially not getting stuck in a car with my kids in the car. Like, that's not a thing that's happening. And I made sure on Friday to go and run all the errands that I needed to run, like getting Daisy medication, picking up stuff from the P.O. box. I made sure to get all that stuff done Friday because I knew this storm was coming. The Echo had told us about the storm. Mr. Coffee was like, I didn't realize there was a storm coming. I'm like, uh, yeah, because he was like, why are you grocery shopping again? Because I want to make sure we have enough food, sir. And he's like, what do you think is going to happen? The same thing that happened that last time. We thought it was just going to be a little storm. We got 26 inches of snow and we got stuck in the house with no power for three days. That. I'm scared of that happening. So whenever uh, we are getting like severe weather warnings, uh, because it's spring, I've learned that it's spring in North Dakota means nothing. Okay, just know that. It means nothing. So if you saw that picture of the snow, you're like, wait, why are y'all getting snow? Because this is blizzard season for us, okay? And I'm not talking about Dairy Queen. This is blizzard season for us, meaning that we get blizzards this time of year. So last time we got that blizzard in April, like a year ago, if you remember, it was April. It, it was April. This is blizzard season for us. It does not stop snowing here until June. So this is blizzard season for us. So what happens is every time, um, every time April comes or there's a snowstorm that's coming, I will buy foods that are easily accessible. Like you can make them without a stove or a microwave or whatever. Because if we get, you know, power shut off and stuff again, I want to make sure that the stuff we buy can be cooked on the grill, Right. So I buy stuff that we can either cook on the grill, because of course you don't need power for the grill. So I buy stuff we can cook on the grill, or stuff that is ready to eat, like sandwiches and stuff like that. And then I bought two bags of ice to stick in the freezer, so that if, again, if we lose power, uh, the freezer contents will stay colder a little bit longer, and all the things. Like, I've, I've learned a lot living here, like how to survive in the extreme cold temperatures, especially if there's no power. And so I pulled out like my 32 stacks or my 32, my stack of 32 blankets had them sitting in the hallway waiting. And Mr. Coffee is like, I think you're going a little overboard. Am I? Am I though? I probably was, but I was prepared. Okay. I was prepared because the last time they were like, oh yeah, you're just going to get a dusting 26 inches. Okay. So no, I'm not going to be sitting here getting caught with my pants, my pants down again. I will be prepared every time it snows. So every time it snows or they say, hey, it's going to snow. Guess what? I go through this whole routine. I make sure I order groceries. I make sure the dog food is full, like they have enough bags of dog food. I make sure that they have enough medication. I have enough med and nobody else in the house takes medication except for Mr. Coffee. He's the only one now that takes medication. So I make sure his medication is refilled and picked up and in the house. Um, I put down salt in the driveway because no matter how much snow there is, Mr. Coffee will always find his way back to work. He does not care. Um, he is also someone who doesn't know how to relax. We come from, again, humble beginnings where it didn't matter if it snowed. It didn't matter what the weather was like outside. You had to provide because if you didn't, guess what? You're not eating that day. So um, and we're pulling out number six again because the top layer of this calls for number six. So he will always find his way out to work. And so I salt the driveway, I salt the steps outside in case we get deliveries or something, um, and then I pull out the stack of blankets, I charge up all the uh, battery chargers, like, uh, oh my gosh, what are they called? The, the things that you can charge devices off of, the battery packs. Um, I charge all of those up. And I'm, I'm sitting here pretty, ready to go. And I'm like, let's go, Storm. I'm ready for you now. And we haven't had a bad storm like that since about a year ago, but still, it still is great to be in practice of making sure you have your house set up and ready for when it does storm. Because again, I'm not trying to get caught with my pants down. So yeah. So that's how it's been in the coffee house as of late. Um, I've been just working a lot, um, but I'm learning to take breaks. I'm learning to take time for myself. I'm learning to do stuff that I enjoy off camera. Um, so I did try to diamond paint a little bit. It didn't go well. Um, I immediately felt anxious. Like I can do it whip and chat and feel fine. But if I'm trying to do it off camera by myself, I get like this overwhelming f like f sense of anxiety about it. And I don't know why. And so I just, I couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to do it. So I put the diamond painting away and I pulled out my steam deck and I was like, you know what? I haven't had a chance to actually sit down and play this thing. 
let me play it. So I sat down and I played with my Steam Deck and Maggie came back and she grabbed, she grabbed my little tablet and she drew like a bunch of little pictures and stuff, which is hilarious because whenever I open up my big tablet, all the little pictures she draws are in the big tablet because they're synced together. And I just find it funny. So like I'll go in there looking for my reference photo and there's like a bunch of Maggie's little pictures in there. <laughs> So I I spent I spent Saturday Sunday and Saturday and Sunday relaxing. Um, I did work out a little bit on Sunday, not a whole lot, um, just because I don't want to overdo it. My knees have been giving me issue, and I'm like, you know, again, I'm not a spring chicken. Getting older, I'm not that old, but I'm getting older, and so like doing a light workout, uh, making sure that I'm drinking enough water, and what is enough water anyways? I don't know. Um, but the first thing I do when I wake up, especially on the weekends is I grab, I go grab my coffee, which there's some days where I forget because I get caught up doing other things. And there's other days where I'm like, please insert the coffee IV immediately. Um, this morning was a little bit of a crazier day because the kids had the two hour delay. And so like they're, they're sitting around like, wait, do we have school today? And I'm like, yes, you have school well, when's the bus coming? I'm like, the bus is coming two hours later than it normally comes. So what time is that? I'm like, y'all telling me y'all can't count to two, okay? You're telling me you can't count two. So if your bus usually comes at seven, count two, what time does your bus come? But is it coming though? Yeah, yes, it's 8.30. But it should have been here by now then. I said count by two. So like 10 o'clock, I said two. Like y'all, I swear for God, these kids this morning were something else. They were on something, I'm telling you what. So got them off to school, talked to a couple of my friends for a little bit. And then I was like, okay, I should probably get on recording. So this week um, I, I have three videos going up, this video and two others. Of course, one being a Diamond R Club sneak peek and the third one, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> I'm not sure yet. I gotta figure that one out. But I'm going to try to keep it at three to four videos a week. Um, the Sims videos will be coming soon. I found an editor to edit the videos for me. Um, my good friend Leon is going to edit the videos for me. He's a really cool guy. Uh, you'll kind of not, you don't, you won't really meet him. But like if you're over on Twitch, you've already met him. If you're not over on Twitch, it's just going to be a random person that I talk to in the videos. Um... Like, he's not going to be in the video with me, like, recording or anything, but he's going to be editing. So I'll be, like, inserting, like, little, like, hey, Leon, could you, you know, edit this or whatever. So I'm I'm excited because he's willing to do this for me because I that video is going to be, like, edited like a normal, like, YouTube game video. And he knows all about that type of stuff, and I don't. So I was like, you have the time. I have the money. I'll pay you to do this, please. And so he said that he's willing to do that for me. So I was like, yay. So the Sims videos, you will get like one or two videos that'll go up that are game related that might not be edited by him. But for the most part, uh, I'll be recording and getting that stuff ready for him to essentially uh, do the edits and stuff for you guys. But with that, that is all I have for you today. I know I didn't fin finish the tulips, but don't worry. Um, there will be a time lapse that goes up of me finishing them. I'm gonna finish the rest of this out with a time lapse. Um, maybe I'll keep you guys on. You'll see at the end of this video. So if this isn't the end of the video, then you know I did a time lapse for you. I'm probably just gonna do the time lapse to be completely honest. Make sure you stay hydrated because I don't really have that much more to do. I have the flowers, which are gonna take me just a few minutes, and then this part here. Um, question of the video, if you've made it this far into the video. What is, and I asked this drink, I, I asked this drink, I asked this question over on Instagram and Facebook, but for those who don't have social media, or if you just would like to answer it again, when you wake up in the morning, what is the first thing you drink? Is it coffee, tea, or water? Coffee, tea, or water? Because typically, the ideal question, well, the ideal question for me would be, you should probably drink water. Do I? No. Do I reach for that cup of coffee? Of course I do. So my, my drink of choice in the morning is coffee. And I'm wondering if I drink water, if it would give me a little bit more energy. Now, I did find a little bit of a trick uh, from a friend of mine and my doctor. 
um, about not eating first thing in the morning because I also will like make myself breakfast as I have my first cup of coffee and then I'll eat breakfast right away when I wake up and my friend and the doctor were like no don't do that if you want to get over that hump in the afternoon try not eating for the first hour that you're awake and then eat something and I was like why and they're like you'll see it'll it'll help you get over that hump of midday and I was like okie dokie well I've been working and doing this now for a week y'all the way I have not taken a nap throughout the day in a week it actually worked now I'm not saying that this is a magic thing that's going to work for everyone it worked for me you can try it to see if it works for you and if you don't know what I'm talking about try not eating anything for the first hour after you wake up and then after that hour feel free to eat your breakfast or whatever you have in the morning um and see how you feel by midday to see if you're still tired now some people have different like you know ailments or whatever that cause them to be super tired. Like if you have the long hauler syndrome like I do of fatigue, like extreme fatigue for no reason. Yeah, it may or may not work for you. But it worked for me and I was super excited about it because now I can get so much more stuff done because I'm not like super duper tired. It's another reason why I didn't have my coffee right away uh, when I started is because I've been waiting an hour to even have my coffee in the morning. And I found that it does give me a little bit more of a boost of energy an hour after I wake up versus when I first wake up, the first thing I do is go grab a cup of coffee. So yeah. But all right, you guys, I'm gonna let you guys go. I do apologize for the weird camera angles. Again, I got to flapping my gums and wasn't paying attention, so I do apologize. Don't forget to answer the question of the video. But with that said, I am going to time lapse the rest of this. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. I hope you do something nice for yourself, meaning whether that be going on a walk or just taking time to take a break from all things life, listen to a book, read a book. Just do something nice for yourself. And I really mean that because it's hard when you're stuck in this constant state of always having to be some, do some, being, when you're stuck in the state of always having to do something that you forget how to relax and take it from someone who is a little bit of a workaholic it's not a good place to be in so make sure you're taking time out of every day to do something nice for yourself whether that be and, and I mean like out of a chair so where you're not sitting in a chair unless you're of course bound to a chair um where you're not sitting in front of a desk staring at a diamond painting or you're not staring at a cross stitch pattern or something get up stretch your legs out Go out for a walk. Go sit on your front porch. Do something to be active and be do something nice for yourself. So with that said, I'm going to time lapse the rest of this. I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day. Thank you so much for stopping by the coffee house and checking in on us. I appreciate it. We hope to see you come back again next week. But until next time, guys, stay safe and always remember to be kind to others because you never know what somebody else is going through. Be courteous because it's the right thing to do and always stay cool. And whether I see you in YouTube land or I see you on Twitch, either way, I'll see you when I see you. Bye, guys.